आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा People cannot live without dreams. Different people have different dreams. Individuals and groups evolve according to environments, circumstances and changing times. Their dreams reflect this. Some dreams, however, are shared. like the dreams of freedom freedom means different things to different people essentially freedom means independence and choice this is a tale of an exciting journey of over 6 decades of free choice At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake. When India opted for the republican form of government and universal franchise, some thought it was the biggest gamble in history. The Election Commission of India has proved wrong. All those who doubted that Indian democracy could work, it has done better than many older democracies. In western democracies adult franchise was dispensed with in stages first to the men of property educated men then to all men and finally to women most important turning feature of indian democracy is unlike every European and North American democracy from the very first day it was real universal adult franchise irrespective of caste creed religion gender color it has never happened in the history of democracy members of the constituent assembly had deliberated long to establish a body to supervise elections with authority and independence to ensure free and fair elections the first thing that was done was to constitute the election commission it was done one day earlier to india becoming a republic that is on 25th january 1950 so article 324 of the constitution it speaks of the election commission Today at election time anyone over the age of 18 years in the country takes part in the polls this however was not always so the demand for universal adult franchise was an integral part of our country's freedom struggle elections were held in british rule india even before independence it was only after independence that the masses were included in this democratic process nehru once said democracy is based on the active and intelligent interest of the people in their national affairs and in the election that results in the formation of governments nehru mingled with the crowds in a carefree manner during election campaigns and communicated the message of nation building personally millions participated in the first general election celebrating their newly found independence there was an air of enthusiasm and expectation huge crowds gathered to listen to their beloved leaders who shared their vision of a new india with them this was the age of sturdy steel ballot boxes and paper ballots the candidates in the arena were identified by unlettered voters by easy to recall symbols allotted to different political parties 
Indira Gandhi's campaign style differed remarkably from her father's. Rather than talk to the people as a parent or as a teacher, she established an easy rapport with the downtrodden. Indira Gandhi struck the right chord in the heart of the electorate by campaigning vigorously and coining popular slogans. To begin with, Indira Gandhi was a bit reserved, but blossomed as a charismatic leader with successive elections. Women all over the country and the most impoverished provided her with a large mass base. She preferred appealing to emotions and rousing passion than reason. The conduct of elections in a free and fair manner in the aftermath of the emergency greatly reinforced the credibility of the election commission. Other eminent leaders to have realized the significance of election rallies, manifestos and speeches when the nation goes to poll. The fact that India has repeatedly and successfully conducted general elections since 1947 and on an unprecedented scale, witnessed in the history, bears testimony to the strength of Indian democracy. Indian parliamentary elections cannot be compared to any polls happening anywhere in the world. Its population that exceeds 1 billion represents the most extraordinary contrasts. The cultural and demographic diversities themselves present difficult challenges. The people of this land of subcontinental size speak nearly a thousand languages, follow several different faiths, and are congregated in hundreds of different ethnic and caste communities. The Constitution of India has given the Election Commission a unique, independent, high-powered role identifying the electoral process as the strongest pillar of democracy. Mahatma Gandhi once said, a small body of determined spirits, fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission, can alter the course of history. The Election Commission functions along the lines of the Collegial of Justices at the Supreme Court Interestingly, the disqualification proceedings to disqualify a candidate can look like a hearing at the Supreme Court. All three members reach a decision in a collegial manner. Multi-member question is the best thing which has happened because I may be biased. There are, other, there are two other colleagues of mine who can overrule me all the time. We have equal vote and decision can be taken by a majority and uh, chief, uh, chief election commissioner has no extra vote or any extra power, his vote is equal. So the very fact that there are three of us, we are able to neutralize any biases and prejudices. Men who have served as chief election commissioners and commissioners have been persons of great experience, tremendous ability and distinction. They enjoy the status of a judge of the Supreme Court of India. Conducting elections in India is almost like the whole of America and Europe getting ready to vote under the aegis of one organization. In India, more than 389 million people voted out of an electorate size of more than 671 million. It is difficult to imagine even four European countries like Italy, France, Switzerland and Holland with a combined population of more than 140 million holding a general election together and that too under the management of one organization. The task sounds too daunting. In India, it is even a bigger reality. Uttar Pradesh alone with a population of more than 190 million is larger than that of those four countries put together. It is difficult to imagine how the numbers are juggled. 
the EC in India somehow manages to pull off the miracle every five years. Security of our personnel and security of the voters are both very prime consideration. Um, uh, we, there are very, very difficult areas, uh, militancy prone, left-wing extremism uh, prone. Uh, we have to do very careful advanced planning. Even scheduling of the election, uh, a lot of uh, thought goes into it. Identifying the period to hold elections throughout the country is not a simple one. The Election Commission has to consider the weather. During winter season, constituency may be snowbound, while in the monsoon, access to remote areas can become severely restricted. The agricultural cycle too has to be considered, so that the planting or harvesting of crop is not disrupted. Elections use schools as polling stations and teachers as election officials. So exam schedule has to be kept in mind as well. And then there are religious festivals and public holidays. Law and order along with availability and movement of central police forces also needs to be considered. This requires a delicate and intricate balancing act and the election commission does it wonderfully well. We have uh, real uh, difficult areas, particularly in the hills, in Arunachal Pradesh, for instance, or even in Ladakh. There are polling stations which cannot be reached by any other way except a polling party carrying the polling kit for two days and two nights. But we, uh, we have to reach and uh, we, cannot, we don't leave out a single voter, we don't leave out a single polling station. For us, it has to be 100% coverage. The last mile is always difficult to reach. In, uh, for our case, it is the last inch. We cannot leave it. In 1996, there was three voters in a constituency called Chako in Arunachal Pradesh. For that, we have sent a helicopter containing five people, one presiding officer, one polling officer, one police, to conduct the election there. There is no country in the world where three voters were there. Elections were held specially by setting up a polling booth in the country. Polling stations are located in the Himalayan ranges, the sands of Rajasthan, the vast Gangetic Plain, in the coastal regions further south, and in the sparsely populated islands in the Indian Ocean. India is the world's largest electoral democracy, and its general elections scattered almost over two months represent a great success of the organizational skill and will of the Commission. At times, the Election Commission of India has held free and fair elections under extremely trying circumstances. The challenge of bringing voters to polling booths in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, when the valley was ravaged by terrorism, was perhaps most daunting. The state had joined the Indian Union under very special circumstances. The instrument of accession had accorded it a special status. Election of the charismatic Sheikh Abdullah had ushered in the era of democratic politics. Unfortunately, due to the external interference during the Cold War, this political process was vitiated. Slowly but surely, the commission established its credibility and the people came out on the streets, not in violent protest but to participate in massive election rallies and to attend meetings addressed by leaders belonging to different political parties. These elections allowed alienated masses to express their wishes and choose their representatives. The long-standing demand for self-determination stridently articulated for years, faded after a popular representative government was formed. Mm -hmm. 
the northeastern region of the country has posed no less a daunting challenge. This tract of land is akin to patchwork quilt of ethnic, sub-ethnic identities. These colorful children have remained cut off from national mainstream. Elections have offered a unique opportunity to win their confidence. In this region too, elections conducted freely and fairly have restored the faith of the people in Indian democracy that has ample space for difference of opinion, even dissent. What is even significant is the fact that many groups that were kept out of the polling booth they dare not come to the polling booth. At least a possibility has been created for them to come to the polling booth and exercise their franchise. But I think the Election Commission has been sensitive to this and therefore we have uh, had in the last uh, at least two or three elections a fairly competently carried out electoral process which I think is a tribute to the Election Commission's performance. The elections held since the birth of the Republic have genuinely empowered the oppressed and the minorities. The electoral process has restored their self-respect and despite stray complaints given them a real stake in Indian democracy. To combat impersonation, that was rampant in rural areas, voters' identity cards with photographs were issued. Covering an electorate of this size was a gigantic and time-consuming task. The electoral roll is the spine of the entire exercise. It is usually revised each year to improve the accuracy of the electoral roll and hence prevent electoral fraud. The Election Commission ordered photo identity card for all voters in August 1993. This was followed a few years later in 1998 when the Commission took a historic decision to computerize the entire electoral rolls. With the simple announcement of election dates, the Election Commission shifts gears from macro to micro mode management. The work of the Commission continues throughout the year. It is not only when elections are held that it gets into action. It is amazing how much work the Election Commission accomplishes in the course of its normal functioning with a small staff of just 300 personnel. To safeguard against booth capturing, snatching or tempering of ballot boxes, electronic voting machines were introduced. Apprehensions regarding the new technology in the minds of political parties and voters were allayed by carefully structured training programs and demonstrations. This has greatly reduced the time taken for counting the ballots manually and eliminated errors. Political changes since independence have been full of turmoil at times. The Election Commission has ensured that governments are changed and transfer of power takes place peacefully. It must have a kind of legitimacy and space to say that, uh, well, its fiat is final if it decides, and of course it has taken its jurisdiction with a great deal of caution, not intervene where we wanted to intervene in terms of expenses incurred in elections, etc. But the fact that it, you know, the schedule it puts forward, the, the fact that it staggers even when people don't want it, now it staggers in one state five, six times, but this is accepted. And the reason and rationale it provides, it provides to people and both parties and all parties, and the people accept that. And there's a reasonable degree of trust that the counting of votes is free, and and fair, and I think that allows transitions to take place. During the tenure of J.M. Lindo, 
as the chief election commissioner a model code of conduct was adopted this obliges the candidates and the parties to desist from indulging in activities that create a public nuisance the most remarkable achievement of the election commission has been to persuade the political parties to voluntarily accept a model code of conduct as soon as the schedule of elections is announced according to the people's representation act 1951 we want a candidate to state his date of birth his age his place of residence where he is a voter whether he is scheduled caste or scheduled tribe why not we ask whether he has got any criminal background whether he has ever committed for corruption what about his assets and liabilities for the last 5 years what about his education qualifications an illiterate man can't make a law therefore i raised the issue of filing an affidavit regarding his criminal background whether you are in jail or bail whether you are convicted or the appeal is pending the voter must know the credentials of the candidate to vote for him. the undesirable role of money power can only be curbed when the candidates are obliged to file affidavit about their assets at the time of elections this process has been started with growing population and changing settlement patterns constituencies required to be delimited to reflect the changed realities This is sanctioned by the constitution and the election commission has recently completed this exercise of delimitation. Colorful advertisements have been released to attract the masses in an interesting manner to come to vote. Celebrity endorsements have been effectively used It's even bigger than the world cup. For that you have to go out and vote. this time and every time aapko apni loktantrik adhikar ka istemal karna hoga is baar har baar democracy can become the government of the people by the people for the people only when this awareness spreads hum hai matdata there have been many interesting initiatives taken by the election commission All the eligible members have been encouraged to acquire new voters identity cards. To enhance their participation in the electoral process, the election commission has sponsored the celebration of Voters Day across the nation. I appreciate the great amount of efforts and preparations required for holding elections and the importance of the right to vote. I congratulate the election commission for its remarkable contribution to the flowering of democracy in the country. The impressive record of the election commission of India at home has attracted attention worldwide. Members of the commission and its officials have been invited to supervise or observe elections in many countries there is a constant stream of foreign visitors to the commission's office in india to learn from the indian experience this international recognition is an accomplishment all indians can take pride in election commission is doing a fantastic job but what i feel is two or three things more can be done firstly more state funding of elections somehow elections need money wo paisa aayega ka two reforms are extremely important one is uh, to debar uh, people with criminal background from contesting election second we would like more um, the transparency and accountability of political parties this journey is yet to end 
and miles to go. Yet, we can surely take a deep breath, look back nostalgically and proclaim, we have done quite well.